OpenAI's recent update just made ChatGPT twice as powerful. This feature I'm going to talk about is called ChatGPT Projects, but 90% of people still don't know how to use it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the best ways to use it, and also stay until the very end of this video because I'm going to compare Cloud Projects and Notebook LM with ChatGPT Projects, so you'll know exactly which tool is right for you. So before we dive in, if you're new here and you love learning about AI and productivity tips, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now because I've got tons and tons of really good content coming your way. Okay, so with that said, let's jump into the video. Okay, so you're probably wondering what are ChatGPT projects and why should I even care? So I want you to think of it this way. ChatGPT projects are like smart folders that will organize everything you're working on in ChatGPT. So normally when you're chatting with ChatGPT, it's like starting a fresh conversation every time. But with projects, you can keep everything organized and in context. It keeps all your chats, files, and also your custom instructions all in one place. Now, most people just use this ChatGPT projects as folders, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. So now let me show you how to set up your first ChatGPT project. Just keep in mind that I have a plus plan and this feature is not yet available for free plan users. It will be available in the future normally, but we just don't know when. <laughs> but if you have plus plan, let me walk you through the process right now. So you will see on the left hand side, uh, this project, and then you will see this plus button here. So just click on it and it will tell you to name the project. So I'm just going to name it real quick. And after that, click on create project. And that's basically it. You have your first project now. You can also organize your project by clicking on the folder here. So you can change colors to whatever you want. Now, let me show you how to add instructions and add files. So for instructions, it's pretty straightforward. You can use this for different things. Either you can ask ChatGPT to assume a rule. So it's always a good idea if we're giving AI the prompts to ask it to act like, you know, something, a rule. So for instance, if you're doing like a marketing campaign here, you can ask ChatGPT to act like a marketing director or something. And if it's a tech project, then you can ask it to play like a CTO role. So it's always a good idea to do this. And the second thing you can do is to ask it to respond in a certain style, format or a tone. So you can say that um, I want you to respond in a friendly tone or an engaging tone. And every chat from now on in this project will just use the instructions that you just gave. So it's a very convenient way to do this. And now let's move on to adding files. And here's where you can give ChatGPT a lot more context. So as you can see, we can add documents, code, um, images, and more, right? So let me just upload something so that you can see. So now I have a marketing plan, a document. I have also a brand guideline, so PDF file. And I will also upload an image. And this is the brand goals. So you can really upload um, all the context that you want ChatGPT to remember for this project. And now with the files uploaded, you can ask it questions and it will remember it. So for instance, if I ask what are our brand goals and it will just pull out the information from the photo that we just uploaded. So this way, if you want to create anything related to your brand, you don't have to paste your brand goals again. You can just use the context to directly create whatever you want to create. So keep in mind that there's actually a limit of how many files you can upload, but OpenAI didn't say anything specific about this yet. And as of right now, you cannot connect directly to Google Drive or OneDrive, but you can still use files from these places by adding them one at a time. All right, so now you've got your first practice set up. Let's talk about how you can use it in the real world. Like what are some practical things you can do with it, right? And first we can 
take a look at content creation because that's what a lot of people need uh, using these AI assistants. So to get started, I want you to always think about how you want to organize your project. And one of the best things about projects is that you can keep everything related to one piece of content in one place. So for instance, if you want to create a blog post, let me show you how to do it so that the blog posts you will create will actually sound like you wrote them. So here's the key thing most people get wrong. You want to create a separate project for each blog post. So let me explain why this works better. You can think of each project like a dedicated workspace for one specific blog post. And when you set it up this way, ChatGPT will stay focused on exactly what you're writing and it won't mix up different topics or like different styles. And it's just like having like a clean desk if you want to work on different pieces of content. This makes sense, right? So first, let's look at what kind of files you can upload to your project. You can think of these like, just like, you know, teaching materials for ChatGPT. And these can include the following types of information, content, your instructions, and templates. Everything to teach ChatGPT how you actually write things. So first content, you can upload your actual blog post, your best blog post, right? To teach it your writing style. You can also upload your brand voice, your personal stories and examples you want to include, and your SEO keywords. And in the custom instructions, you can include how you structure your post, how you write it, how you like to make your sentences, and how you choose your words. All these things you can include in instructions. And last but not least, you can upload also templates. And these are like my favorite because you can really make sure that the output really matches what you have in mind. So the templates can include your outline templates, your intro formats, your conclusion templates, and also if you have any like call to action templates, just upload everything to your ChatGPT projects. And this will make ChatGPT create content that sounds just like you wrote it and not like it just came straight from an AI assistant. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And now let's move on to the next one, which is using projects to write your social media posts or captions. Because I know a lot of you use these tools to create social media content. So now here's a tip for you. You don't want to make a new project for every social media campaign. Instead, you can just make one project for each platform. So for example, you can have one project for LinkedIn and another one for X. And why is that? Because, well, you talk obviously differently on each platform, right? So like, I don't know, for example, on LinkedIn, maybe you sound more professional and like business-like, but on X, you're probably more like casual or you have this more punchy style. So if you keep them separate, each project becomes like a different version of your online voice. And now let me show you how this works. So for your LinkedIn project, you can start by uploading your like best post, you know, those posts that get like lots and lots of engagement and just really sound like you, for example, you also want to add your style guide so you can show how you like to write your post and what makes them uniquely yours. So when you're setting up these instructions for your LinkedIn project, you can tell ChatGPT about your writing preference. Maybe you like to use like bullet points or you want to break up your text into an easy to read format. So you can tell it everything. And now for the other project, the X project or Twitter, you can do something similar. You can upload all those tweets that really took off and you include your best threads and any post that just got people like crazy commenting and sharing, those are the ones you're looking for. And then you add examples of how to start your tweet, like the structure of your tweets and threads and the instructions. So once you've got everything set up, now if you want to create a piece of new content, it's just super easy. You just want to start a new chat in these projects whenever you need. For example, if you have like a new product launch on LinkedIn, then you can just use the LinkedIn project and then you give it some context. Then it already knows your voice, so it will write it for you. 
And if you want to create another like engaging pose on X, you can just do the same process, but on the X project this time, right? So the same is true for your image prompts as you can include like detailed instructions about what type of images that you want to create. So you could say something in the instructions like create images with our brand colors, and then you can give the colors of your brand. So like these are going to be your preset instructions that will make sure that every image that you create in future will match your brand guidelines without having to just retype these prompts each time, right? And all of this can help you get a whole month of social media posts done in just one sitting. Pretty simple. So now I want to give you a power tip that will transform your content creation. Uh, we talked about creating like blog posts and social media posts, but what's really powerful is that you can use it to build a repurposing content machine. Okay, so let me explain. Now you can create a project called content repurposing or something like that. Now you want to upload your main content. Maybe it's a blog post or like a video script. And here's the smart part. Now you can add separate files containing specific prompts for each type of content you want to create. So for example, you have one file for your YouTube shorts, another one for your tweet, your threads, and then another one for your newsletters. I'm just saying like, for example, right? Depending on what type of content you want to create. And in your custom instructions here, you can set like rules about your content. You can tell ChatGPT which words to use, which words to avoid, how you want everything to be formatted and then just give all the information about these platforms. Now with all these files, when you're ready to create, just tell ChatGPT which prompt file to use. So if you need a YouTube script or YouTube short script, then it will follow those instructions. And if you want to write a newsletter from your blog post, for example, it will use that format as well. So each new piece will maintain your style while fitting perfectly on each platform. So you can keep improving your system this way. Like over time, you can test different prompts. You can adjust your instructions and refine your outputs. And once you feel like, okay, there's something here is working pretty smoothly, then you can use this project again and again with any new content that you create. It's just like a machine at this point. Now, as I promised you in the beginning of this video, I'm going to talk about the differences between ChatGPT projects, cloud projects, and also Notebook LM. And each one is designed for different needs. So you have to know the strength and weaknesses of each one to be able to pick the best one for you. So ChatGPT projects is really good if you want to create content and write things, but you're working solo, like you're working on your own because right now it doesn't still support any like collaboration feature, but it does come with a lot of other things like Dali, you can do web search and you can use like canvas feature and, and things like that. So it's pretty good if you need like these different tools in one place. And when you're creating content or you're like building websites, managing your marketing campaigns, this is all really good in ChatGPT. And cloud projects, on the other hand, is best for like handling more complex work, right? So if you have like longer text that you need to analyze or you need to give like a long context, you can use cloud. And also in cloud, we do have the team plan, right? That you can collaborate with your team. So that's something that we cannot currently do with ChatGPT projects. And if privacy is something that you care, then you will also more opt for Claude rather than ChatGPT because Claude has more like focus on privacy. And same goes for Notebook LM because it doesn't take your data or what you input to train its AI. So if privacy is your concern, then you should go for Claude or Notebook LM. Of course, ChatGPT is also fine, but you have to manually opt out of data training, this kind of thing, okay? Um, but I personally love Claude for any kind of writing task because I just love how natural it sounds. It sounds more human-like for me. 
And for research, I always use Notebook LM. So even if I do think ChatGPT projects is pretty good, but I love the fact that in Notebook LM, you can use Google Doc and you can share with a team. So for my workflow, it just worked better for me. Okay, now you have a lot more knowledge about ChatGPT project and how to best use it. If you found today's tutorial helpful, show some love, like the video, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out. And also, if you haven't already, I have this Notebook LM tutorial that I will break down everything, how to do research, how to generate AI podcasts. It can help you save so much time and it's a free tool. So go ahead and watch this tutorial right now and I'll see you over there. Have a good day.